Pokemon like the Weezing, the Zashin, the Dialga. These Pokemon do not want to take ground type attacks, and three of them, and they're all pretty key components in Javier's team. You know, two of the, the two of them are the restricted. So you you need to make sure that you're keeping those protected. And Eric needs to make sure on the flip side that he is protecting the Groudon and the Gastrodon, so they're able to pick up those KOs. I would not be surprised in the least to see possibly Max Quakes coming out from either of these Pokemon. Secretly, really hoping it's going to be Dynamax Gastrodon. That would be <laughs> awesome to see on the stream. But then again, Groudon also makes a very formidable Dynamax Pokemon. Getting that extra bulk as well in its Dynamax form will really help it have that longevity if it has to deal with possibly the weather disruption from that opposing Weezing. But another Pokemon that Javier has that's going to be definitely difficult to deal with can be that Rillaboom. Rillaboom obviously being able to apply a lot of pressure to the Groudon and the Gastrodon. Yeah, 100%. And when you look at the overview, Lou, it's... It on Eric's side, you've got the Charizard, and you kind of look for options here where Javier's got really good options outside of the Blastoise to deal with it. And I think that's why Javier's going to have to lean a little bit harder on, on the Blastoise in this match. So we are going to jump into it, though, Lou, right now. So. Well, Eric leading out with the Restricteds in full form. It's going to be the Zashin and the Groudon for Eric, paired up with the Blastoise and the Weezing for Javier. So straight away, the Neutralizing Gas is going to stop Intrepid Sword and stop the Drought as well from Eric. Yeah, which is incredible. And you're already seeing the disruptive nature of this uh, neutralizing gas from the Weezing. It is going to be threatened by the, the Groudon on Eric's side of the field. Of course, uh, we, we do know it has the, the Shaka Berry. So mm -hmm. it's going to be able to take uh, at least one Precipice Blades or uh, 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 Max Quake. But um, the Blastoise is in a great position here where it can really threaten the Groudon in return. Uh, it can get a G-Max Cannonade off. Doesn't need to worry as long as that Weezing's next to it about a Gastrodon switching in and kind of disrupting that. So you can start that residual damage with that big G-Max move if Javier decides to go down that route. And um, maybe go for something like the Zash in here and try and get some big damage onto it, remove it from the field as soon as possible. But you can't really ignore the Groudon either because it puts such pressure on the Weezing because of that ground weakness that it does carry. Exactly, and Groudon is going to be Dynamaxing up into its full form here, doubling up its HP stat and being able to apply a lot of pressure with something like a Max Quake. Even if that Weezing wants to go for a Protect, it's certainly going to hurt going through and still dealing significant damage. Javier wants to keep that Weezing around as long as possible in order to keep these abilities suppressed on Eric's side of the field. Javier, however, also going to go for a Dynamax of their very own, going to be getting that Gigantamax Blastoise up on here in the first game of Swiss Round 10. I'm going to be able to apply, like you said, that pressure with the G-Max Cannon um, you know, wants to get that residual damage set up while it's still able to without the threat of Gastrodon's ability getting in the way. Zashin playing defensively, going to go straight for a Protected, doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage as Groudon goes for the Max Quake, targeting down into that Weezing. You see the Shooker Berry activate, but this is still really going to hurt. Yeah, and it is. If the Weezing can hang on here, you've got to worry for Eric about the, the threat of a will potentially coming out from the Weezing mm -hmm. into that Groudon, and that is going to really slow down the Groudon's ability to put any offensive pressure onto the field. Um, but you can see there the Shaka Berry coming in doing its job, exactly what Javier wants it to do. To oh. just hang on. Exactly. Brilliant item choice on there. And the G-Max Cannonade going into Groudon, not dealing a significant chunk of damage, but is going to be able to get that residual damage set up as well. Um, Weezing does indeed go for the Will-O-Wisp, but it goes into the Protect of the Zashin there. You know, if that had gone into the Groudon, that would have been really nice targeting. But then Zashin is a Pokemon that you want to be able to get that burn on because Eric does have the utility to switch it out, bring it back in and get that Intrepid Sword boost when Weezing maybe has been dealt with. Yeah, definitely. And, um, it, you know, a nice play for both players here. Like, Eric gets the special defense boost with his Groudon and onto the Zashin as well. Going to make taking the, the Cannonades in particular a lot easier from that Blastoise on Javier's side of the field. And um, the targeting of the, the Will-O-Wisp, like you say, makes a lot of sense into the Zashin. If you can burn that, it makes this match a whole lot easier for you if you're Javier. Um, so nice protect there on Eric just to make sure that just hang on this turn. And you're in a position now where you're going to be able to pick up the knockout on the Weezing if it doesn't protect so you could maybe read that and go for the double up into the blast toys here knowing that you're probably safe enough to not take a knockout on either of your pokemon on eric's side of the field yeah, this is another reason why the burn would have been really good, because even if the Zashin is at neutral, the Behemoth Blade does have double base power when it targets into a Dynamax Pokemon, and Blastoise doesn't want to take any unnecessary damage. Even though it is not very effective, it still will be chipping away at that Pokemon. The Max Quake comes down into the Weezing through Protect. It is not quite enough to pick oh, up the KO, surviving on one HP. Fantastic from Weezing there. I was going to say, you know, it was already on dwindled amount of HP there, but just being able to survive, and this could really get Javier the edge as this game progresses. G-Max Cannonade 
once again firing off from this Blastoise. Going to be targeting down into that Groudon, now taking a below 50% HP remaining. That could certainly be critical when the Dynamax turns are over and those HP stats are reduced again. With these Cannonade damages too, really just chipping away at Eric's Pokemon. Yeah, 100%. And you know that the, the interesting thing now is what you could do if you were Eric was is potentially switch your Zashin out if you do have the Gastrodon on the back. None that the Groudon has that speed advantage on the Blastoise where you can target into the Weezing mm -hmm. slot to get the max quick off into that slot, get that additional special defense boost. But because then you'd be knocking the Weezing out, the neutralizing gas is gone. If you bring the Gastrodon in here, then you're redirecting that cannonade and avoiding the damage. But Eric just opting for the, the, the damage, which isn't a bad thing either, mm -hmm. getting rid of it now, and then you can get another. You just get rid of that issue altogether. Exactly. Weezing will now be removed and of course the neutralizing gas goes away so the abilities reactivate. So Intrepid Sword boost will happen and the sun will come into the sky here in round 10 bringing that drought onto the battlefield. So we'll be now reducing further the damage of these max cannonades for example as the water type moves are reduced when the sun is in the sky. Max Quake coming out going into that Blastoise actually does a really big chunk of damage there putting Blastoise into a very precarious situation and getting a special defense boost up as well on the Zashin and the Groudon. That could be helpful in the face of something like the Dialga or the Porygon 2 a little bit later on in the match if they do come in for Javier. The Cannonade is going to come up once again into Zashin, just does a little bit of damage. And I think the key thing here that Javier has done in these first couple of turns is just try and deal as much damage as possible so that possibly the Pokemon in the back can come and clean up throughout the rest of the match. Yeah, and the big thing here to think of as well, you know, that like Eric has his two restricteds out on the field right now. So if you can remove them, it makes it a lot easier to kind of close out the match because potentially Javier could have his two restricteds in the back. Although, True. you know, that generally, as one. Zashian, if it's facing down against something like a Charizard, it potentially is on Eric's side of the field in the back, maybe, does have a, lot, a much harder time. Mm -hmm. Well, you can see the Dynamax turns are now over. Both these players have utilized them and managed to keep their Pokemon alive and, you know, throughout all of this. Um, they're able to still be utilized going into this next kind of turn. Um, Zashian on Javier's side, though, certainly looking to be quite formidable. Could easily pick up a KO against either Groudon or Zashian on Eric's side. But I think it depends on how these Zashians are trained as well and who's going to move first. Because the Zashian on Eric's side could either try and clean up that Blastoise or can go for some really significant damage into that Zashian. Yeah, well, we know from Eric's team that the, the, the Groudon's likely assault vest so it's a pretty like guaranteed hit into that slot, a knockout into the Groudon. You don't need to risk hitting into that slot thinking and Protect might come out there. So you can get rid of the, the Groudon here and then uh, try and attack with the Blastoise. So even with the Sun up, if you've got something like Hydro Cannon, you're probably able to pick the knockup out onto the, uh, the Zashin here. But Javier opting to keep it in the back for later on this game. Yeah, Dialga's been left at home for this game one, and Rillaboom's going to join the field. Again, a Pokemon that can apply great pressure to that Groudon, and also able to utilize Fake Out. Sacred Sword's going to come out from the Zashin, picking up the KO against Groudon, so Eric will be taking his first KO of this game, and losing one Restricted, as the Zashin on Eric's side is able to retaliate with a Behemoth Blade. Going to be finding its mark down onto the opposing Zashin, dealing a significant chunk of damage, but obviously not able to get the KO on this occasion. Grassy Troin as well, just going to help regain a little bit of that damage. Cannonade still in effect though, Lee. Yeah, and that's the, the big thing here. You can see how much the, the residual damage is doing, putting Eric's Zashin in range now of probably a grassy glide here. Um, obviously, Javier putting himself in a nice position where he's got an active fake out this next turn, so he can just go for the fake out into Eric's Zashin. Even if it protects here, it's going to go down to the Cannonade residual damage. But Eric kind of responding in the same sort of way with, mm -hmm. with his own fake out to prevent the opposing Zashian attacking here. But depending on the speed tiers here, you could potentially fake out into the fake out, but it's probably not the best idea. So you <laughs> probably want to just check uh, the, the opposing Zashian uh, with a fake out. But it's a difficult one because you're kind of, if you do that, you're leaving the Incineroar open to, to kind of maybe get an attack onto the Rillaboom here, get, the, get some big damage onto it. Um, and with the sun being up, Incineroar, if it does launch a Flare Blitz off instead of a fake out, uh, whatever it hits, it's, it could have the potential to knock out something on Javier's side of the field. Well, the Rillaboom just goes for the fake out straight into the opposing Incineroar, and Zashin just has enough HP remaining to be able to set up that substitute as the Behemoth Blade on Eric's side is going to be firing and targeting down into the substitute of that Zashin. So nice kind of defensive play there from Javier, allowing the Zashin to be able to survive out this particular turn. You know, the Behemoth Blade would have been able to pick up the KO there. And by shutting down that Incineroar, it can't go for any of those fire-type moves that 
both the Zashan and the Rillaboom certainly do not want to be taking. No, fantastic play there from Javier revealing the, the substitute on the Zashan, just to be able to kind of take the, uh, the, the, the Behemoth Blade in mm -hmm. that situation, get around the fake out that's active on the field from the Incineral. Um, and as you see, the, the Cannonade damage had actually stopped that turn. So oh. they, uh, the, the, the knockout onto the opposing Zashan on Eric's side wasn't even a thing. So the, the Zashian here in Eric's side still in a, in a strong position. Um, obviously, the Javier Zashian cannot substitute anymore because it's, it's health so low. Um, and Eric sitting pretty comfortable with the Incinero on a nice position, threatening damage, a super effective damage on both things on Javier's side of the field. Yeah, that's very true. And of course, the Rillaboom and Zashan on Javier's side have taken that Intimidate from the Incineroar as well. So they'll be dealing out less offensive pressure. I think it's a wise switch then from that Rillaboom to be able to reset that Intimidate, but also get the Fake out for a little bit later on. Blastoise really can't do too much more in this match. So just switching in for Javier, maybe kind of sacking it to be able to bring a Pokemon back in could be an excellent play. But you can see the Zashan on Eric's side has finally been thwarted by the Zashan on Javier's side. So he was able to pick up a KO, leaving Eric with neither of his Restricteds remaining. Flare Blitz is going to come out though, find its target onto that Blastoise, pick up the KO against it, but I think Blastoise is quite happy to sacrifice itself in here in order for Javier to be able to bring the Rillaboom back in. Unintimidated, you have that fake out pressure. The key thing here, here is what is Eric's last remaining Pokemon? If it's something like the Gastrodon, Rillaboom's going to be really happy about that. Zashin can deal with the Grimmsnarl, but if it's that Charizard, it's going to be really difficult for Javier. Yeah, and even though Javier does have the active fake out here, you can all Eric needs to do is just protect the Charizard mm -hmm. for one turn and then it, it's it's primed, it's ready to kind of just launch off a big fire attack into the Zashian or the Rillaboom and just pick up a big knockout. It's going to be very difficult from this spot for Javier to kind of pull this one back. No, that's really true. And Rillaboom here, you know, yes, you said can go for that fake out, but it's facing down against two tire type, fire types. And even if it is running something like the Assault Vest, that's still going to be dealing damage through it, you know, being able to pick up Massive fire damage from the Incineral that isn't going to be affected by that item. Um, whereas the Charizard can go for you know something like a Heat Wave if it is carrying that move and try and deal damage to both of these Pokemon. So I think wise from Zashin to go for a Protect here, as is Rillaboom. It's not utilizing any Fake Out here. Just maybe trying to scout out what Eric wants to do. Yeah, and stall out the Sun Turns as well is another thing that's probably on Javier's mind, you know. Just try and, and get through the Sun Turns so that those fire type attacks aren't as and strong and you sun gone. see it fading there. Um, but it's, it's still a, it's a very tall order here because Behemoth Blade will do a lot of damage into the Charizard, but if you're attacking into the Charizard, you're leaving the Incineroar alone and it's actually in solo health at the minute. It, it's not really going to be able to take a single attack from either of these two fire types on, on Eric's side of the field. So he's positioned himself really well in this endgame, making it very difficult for Javier to kind of close this one out. Exactly. Sacred Sword going to go down into that opposing Incineroar as Charizard goes for the Blast Burn, not finding a Protect this time, but instead finding that Zashin and removing it from the field. And this is the issue now with Rillaboom, because what can Rillaboom really do to both of these Fire-type attackers? Going for the high horsepower into something like the Incineroar is great, but Flying Charizard isn't going to worry about that at all. It does connect on the Incineroar, though. Isn't quite able to get the KO, thanks to the Shookerberry revealed on that Incineroar, able to survive as Incineroar is able to retaliate with that Flare Blitz. So targeting down into the Rillaboom, not quite quite a one-hit KO as the Sun has left the arena. Good to know that kind of damage would be there. Yeah, and with the Charizard using the Blast Burn, it does have to take a turn to recharge here. That is but true. Like you say, the, the Rillaboom probably doesn't have anything in its arsenal mm -hmm. to be able to hit this Charizard. Uh, for the big damage it needs yeah. to, you know, um, and the Charizard are going to be in a position to turn after that to just throw out another Blast Burn and close this one up. Unfortunately, Rillaboom just not the Pokemon that you kind of want to be facing down against the Charizard win. <laughs> Particularly a, a full health Charizard at that, and you can see the Grassy Glide just doing minimal damage here. All Charizard needs to do is click that Blast Burn button again, and we'll be able to seal up game one for Eric. Charizard is indeed going for it, but actually avoids the Rillaboom. Rillaboom going for a Grassy Glide, but I think it's just a matter of time here. Charizard can try again and improve its accuracy a little bit. It's a good job that you don't get the recharge turn if you oh, miss. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, like you just need one of these to connect, and you're going to be able to there take multiple Grassy Glides, and as you see here, the Blast Burn coming out and going to be more than adequate <laughs> to uh, deal with this this Willaboom on the health that it was left. And uh, very close game there for a game one now, but Eric closing that out and taking an early lead in this first set.
Yeah, I mean, Javier, you said it was very, very close, and I was really impressed at the beginning how Javier came out and controlled kind of the abilities on the field with that wheezing, was able to use the Blastoise really well to get that G-Max Cannonade up early. But Eric was just able to preserve the Pokemon that he needed in order to kind of get that end game win, keeping that Charizard nice and safe in the back and removing the Pokemon that could potentially threaten the Charizard allowed Eric to be able to bring it in when it was virtually untouchable. Yeah, it was the it's the special defense boosts uh, on top of the assault vest that, mm -hmm. that Eric's kind of getting on his ground on with those max quakes every turn. Yes, make it difficult for Javier to kind of build any sort of momentum. And you saw the damage that the hydro cannon was doing out of the sun, which was respectable damage. But with those special defense boosts kind of stacking up each turn, and then once the wheezing is gone, the sun comes into play, and it makes it even more difficult to utilize uh, that that attack to get the damage that you need and it was he kind of needed one more turn of the residual damage on the Zashian and I think if he got it as I was talking about in that game if he got it that turn I think it would have been a very different game but Eric managing the, the game extremely well protecting his Zashian exactly how he needed to to give him the room to kind of come in, in that end situation with the, the Incineroar and the Charizard to, to close it up because having his team once you do lose the Blastoise is very susceptible to the, the fire type attacks that are coming out from Eric's side of the field and that, that, that's the hard thing to manage yes. in this match. No, that's really true and I think the unfortunate thing there for the Blastoise was with Eric's lead of the Groudon and the Zashin, Dynamaxing up that Groudon gave it the extra bulk that it's going to be able to take those G-Max Cannonades really well and obviously the Zashin isn't going to worry about them too much and although it was great that Javier was being able to set up that residual damage, the actual Max moves themselves weren't picking up any KOs and that just meant that after the Dynamax was over, Eric was in the stronger position then to be able to deal damage back, pick up the KOs because he had the Pokemon preserved in the back that he needed and possibly going into this game too, Javier needs to find a way to go on the offensive a little bit more, maybe bring that Zashin in a little bit earlier to try and pick up and um, KOs where possible just to limit the options that Eric has and maybe force the Pokemon that he's preserving in the back to come forward. But it's definitely a tough ask when you think that Eric can just leap with that Groudon again. Groudon can really hit so many Pokemon on Javier's team. Yeah, and th that's the problem, I think. it's Like you say, I think you've got to try and utilize the Zashian to maybe get the chip with the Blastoise mm -hmm. early game and put that Zashian with the residual damage, uh, the Groudon into range for a Behemoth Blade to then get it off the field as soon as possible so you aren't getting the full utility that Eric is wanting to do with that that max quake and get that three special defense boost on you know the Groudon and potentially the Zashian sitting next to it um, because really the big hitters on on Javier's side are going to be special attackers outside of the Zashian but Eric does have Intimidate to kind of help mitigate that as well. Very true. Well, let's jump into game two here of Swiss round 10 at the European International Championships. Eric leading out with the restrictors here with the Zashin and the Groudon once again. Certainly gave Javier a lot of trouble, but same leads as well, Weezing and Blastoise. Do you think Lee Javier has the option to do anything different with these leads, or is it possible that you could go for that same residual strategy, but maybe have a Pokemon in the back that you could bring in? I think you've got to be careful. I think, like with the Weezing, I think what Javier did really well in game one was protect that wheezing and preserve it for the, the full Dynamax turns until that last, very last turn of Dynamax for the, the Gigantamax Blastoise. The one thing that you think you could maybe change is getting the Will-O-Wisp onto the ground on this turn. You mm -hmm. know for a fact it's the Assault Vest, so there's no protect coming up from that slot, so it is a guaranteed, as long as it hits, Yes. <laughs> it is a guaranteed way to burn and slow that, that, that ground on down and reducing the damage. We saw in, the, I think, turn three how much the Max Quake did to the Gigantamax Blastoise, and it was a heck of a lot of damage. If you can preserve that Blastoise for later in the game, I think that's a, a, w a better option for Javier, but then if you're not kind of checking the Zash in here with a Will-O-Wisp, you leave it if it does attack and Blastoise is going to be able, going to be taking a Behemoth Blade. So it's, it's, it's really risky and it's going to be a big call here for Javier, but there it, it's a different option mm -hmm. from to, to maybe target to get a guaranteed burn potentially onto something on Eric's side of the field on these physical type attackers. That's right, the burn could be really disruptive here. And Weezing, instead going for the Protect here in Turn 1, that's different from the previous game, sat and took the Max Quake, activating up that Sugar Berry. As Zashin actually goes for the Behemoth Blade, again, would have dealt some really good damage, particularly if followed up by this Max Quake, which it is indeed doing. And that would have actually been able to pick up the KO against that Weezing, removing it from the field here in Turn 1. But with the Protect, was going to be able to survive it. The one issue is that Sugar Berry has now been consumed, so Weezing's not going to be able to rely on that in the next turn. But it might be enough at this point just to give that Blastoise the opportunity 
potential to go for the GMAX cannon age. You can see the special defense boost going up on Eric's side as well. That's certainly going to be frustrating for this Blastoise, but actually going for the max strike, targeting down into that ground on dealing minimal damage, but critically reducing the speed of both of these Pokemon. I really like this play because Javier is starting to think about the end game here, possibly when his own Zashin comes into the fray. Yeah, this is a really, really smart play from Javier. You know, that the big problem I think in that game one was that the Groudon was always hitting before the Blastoise, yes. getting those special defensive boosts before we could get the cannonade on. Now, the Groudon going to be slower, so it gives Javier a lot more flexibility. Also, now, it, is the Groudon slower than the Weezing, depending on the speed stats, you know? So, is he going to be able to get maybe a Will-O-Wisp off before the Groudon can attack, which is going to be huge? Uh, we'll, we'll find out right now as we see a Behemoth Blade coming out from that Zashin on Eric's side of the field. Yeah, despite the speed drop, Zashin is still the fastest thing on the field. Going into the Blastoise here, not very effective, obviously doubling its capabilities when it's going into a Dynamax Pokemon. Blastoise is moving first here, though, out of the battle between Gla Blastoise and Groudon, so it will find its mark on the Groudon before it's able to get a second special defense boost from something like a Max Quake. And finally getting that residual up as well. Weezing does go for the Willibus and finds its mark on the Groudon, so really nice adjustment here from Javier, not targeting down that Zashin so much, but really focused Focusing in on the ground on that Willowist change, I think is going to be really good as this game progresses. Max Quake, however, wow. will go into the Weezing, and again, look why this burn was so good. Doesn't need it, Sugarberry. It's able to survive. Yeah, that is a huge play there, and you can see the impact of that Max. Um, strike hard with that speed drop here just to give Javier the advantage to get the burn onto the ground on here and, and be able to kind of not only have the wheezing stick around for at least another turn uh, to that final turn of um, the, the Gigantamax uh, for the Blastoise it also reduces the damage that the Blastoise is going to take this next turn. It's still going to take big damage from the Behemoth Blade, of course, but um, if Zashin doesn't decide to attack into the Weezing this turn, it does leave itself open to potentially getting burned as well. So it kind of forces Eric to either protect that slot or attack uh, with Zashin into that slot. Yeah, honestly, long live this Weezing. He's doing so well, and it's kind of like Mr. Perfectly Fine over here in the face of all of these ground-type moves, able to have the Sugarberry, the longevity. Really great play of this Weezing. But unfortunately, Zashin has had enough of enough of all of that glory and is able to pick up the KO against it, returning the Weezing to its Pokeball and bringing the abilities back to the field. So once again, Intrepid Sword Boost is going to go up. This Ashen will now be at plus one and the Groudon will have the Sun in the Sky with the Drought ability as well. Yeah, and uh, that Intrepid Sword Boost is going to be huge for Eric here, just making sure that the um, this Ashen is going to be hitting as hard as possible going into this next turn, but a really nice play from Javier, just knowing that the Weezing is going to go down this turn. The sun is going to return to the field and going for the max hail storm into the ground on and getting the hail onto the field. And that is going to also stack with that residual damage from the cannonade. And the nice thing about going for the max strike is with the blast toys, he kind of has delayed the residual damage, mm -hmm. you know, so he's got like obviously a little bit later on in the game now. So he's going to have that extended period where it is going to be attacking both Pokemon on the field on Eric's side. I'm just a little bit speechless at that. The plays, the adjustments that Javier has made coming into this game too have been phenomenal. And like you said there, Lee, calling that the sun was going to come back, let's change it, let's stop you having that extra kind of boost your fire type moves that no doubt if the Incineroar and the Charizard are the same two Pokemon in the back are going to want to benefit from. So get that chip damage up, get all the residual damage stacking up. And it also now does give Javier the opportunity to bring in a Pokemon from the back. It's going to be his own Zashin, and we've got to remember that Eric's Zashin is now slower having taken that max strike earlier. Yeah, and this is a nice thing about the max strike again because you're not really worried about the ground on now like you can deal with Eric Sashin mm -hmm. quite handily with your own Sashin it's taken enough damage with the residual damage the hail chip and now the ground on isn't going to be a threat to your own Sashin where you can use your own Blastoise mm -hmm. here to remove it from the field and that makes things a lot easier in the end game for Javier yeah, and the Zashin on Eric's side looking to be within range of a Behemoth Blade from the Zashin on Javier's side. Again, if you're Javier, this could be the opportunity to maybe capitalize on the fact that Eric has to play a little bit defensively here. You could possibly try and set up a substitute just to give you that longevity going forward. But at the same time, the opportunity is so tempting to just pick up those key KOs. Eric is going to switch out the Zashin, which I think is quite wise. It's certainly a critical Pokemon towards the end game. And by bringing in the Incineroar, you get to throw an Intimidate down onto the Intrepid Sword boosted Zashin. So bringing it back down to neutral attack, making it a little bit weaker going forward. The Zashin is, however, going to go for that Behemoth Blade, and I wonder if this was going into that original Zashin slot, so we'll find the Incineroar, and that's exactly the target that's been chosen, dealing minimal damage. So a great switch here by Eric, trying to gain a little bit more control back over on this ball position as Blastoise fires off the Hydra Cannon. Very powerful move down into the face of that Groudon and removing it from the field. 
yes, you've got rid of that Groudon, but it now does give Eric the opportunity to bring that Zashin back in without the speed drop. Yeah, it's a nice play from Eric here, just adjusting to get that, mm -hmm. that fake out active next to the Zashin for this next turn. And with the use of Hydro Cannon here from the, the Blastoise, Javier kind of locked away. He's not going to be able to, to make a, a move with the Blastoise this next turn. So if you are Eric, you can concentrate everything down into the Zashin on Javier's side of the field with that fake out, with a Behemoth Blade, not need to worry about the Blastoise, which is not really going to be able to do anything uh, this next turn because of the recharge. Yeah, I love this positioning here from Eric. Like you said, you've got the fake out in the field with that Incineroar, and Blastoise you shouldn't have to worry about at all. It's going to have to recharge. And to be honest, if you leave it long enough, it's going to fall victim to its own hail chip. Um, you know, it's only got 19 hit points there remaining. Um, but I think Eric in a great position, like you said, the fake out, Behemoth Blade pressure, really, really strong. But actually switching out that Incineroar, maybe wanting to keep the Intimidate for a little bit later on, or capitalizing on the fact that Blastoise really can't do anything. Let's get Charizard in on here. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice play to get the, 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 the Intimidate mm -hmm. in cycle again. So he's got it to bring in to really weaken that uh, Zashin once again. We do see Eric just make sure that he's getting rid of that Blastoise, which is mm -hmm. probably one of the only things that we've already outlined that really threatens that Charizard. Uh, Zashin, neutral, uh, attacks that at the minute after that one Intimidate um, and will be minus one if that, that Incineroar decides to come in once again. And you can see the, the last turn of the residual damage here taken a bit more chip damage on that Zashin and doing some actually really good damage to the Charizard. Maybe if you are Javier, you might want to try and consider... Um, well, he's locked now, isn't he? He can't switch mm -hmm. out the Zashin, so you kind of really can't reset that uh, Intimidate that you've already had onto it. So you are relying now on, on the Zashin and the, the Rillaboom to deal with the Charizard. You do have active fake out, but it's easy for Eric now just to, to adjust and bring the Incineroar back onto the field and keep that Charizard for later on in the match when there isn't the fake out disruption from Javier's side. I mean, once again, we see Eric in the late game really switch the momentum into his favor. Being able to have that Incineroar in the back, coming in to intimidate both of these physical attackers and two Pokemon that really, relatively speaking, cannot do too much to this Charizard. So I really wouldn't be surprised to see Charizard switch out again. He doesn't want to take any chip from the tail and wants to be preserved a little bit more. But instead, it's going to be the Zashin going for the switch here, bringing in the Incineroar, throwing down that Intimidate and just weakening the offensive pressure of both the Rillaboom and the Zashin. We know Rillaboom really cannot touch this Charizard. You know, it's got high horsepower, Grassy Glide, that's really Really, it can only use that Grassy Glide here. Rillaboom is going to go for the Fake Out, though, into Charizard, just protecting the Zashin a little bit as Zashin goes for a Sacred Sword. Catching that Incineroar switch in, but it's not enough to pick up a KO. These Intimidates are doing really well, and Incineroar does have some decent bulk to it as well. Yeah, that's a nice switch from Eric as well, but a really good play, a good read from Javier to um, go for the Sacred Sword onto that, that Incineroar switch in, which makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, get like a lot out of mm -hmm. for the rest of this game. But... Eric's got the active fake out now. He can go into either the Rillaboom or the Zash in here and uh, launch a blast burn off with the Charizard to try and remove something from the field. And he's still got his own Zash in the back, which can come in, get that intrepid sword boost. And he's reset that speed drop from earlier on now. So when it comes back in, it potentially will be the at least a speed tie at the very least with the opposing Zashin on Javier's side. And there it is. We didn't we didn't lose it for long. It came right back into the battle. And I think this is really, you know. Again, methodical, skillful play from Eric, just knowing that these Intimidates are really going to pay off. And there's literally nothing that Javier can do in this situation. Charizard easily able to take that Grassy Glide as Ashen follows up with the Behemoth Blade. So, going to be able to follow down and find its mark onto that opposing Charizard. And it, oh, it is enough to remove it from the battlefield. So, nice adjustment here from Javier, just removing the threat of that Charizard. But then you still have to deal with the Incineroar when it comes back in. The interesting thing is, though, that Javier does really kind of have the utensils to do that in the form of high horsepower and sacred sword it's just whether the high horsepowers have been affected enough by that intimidate and remind me has the incineral used at sugarberry in this game no it has not ah. but i think with i think it's only about 30 hp so mm. i think oh true yeah so even with the the barriers probably <laughs> i thought it was a little healthier it might be. It could be <laughs> but probably going to go down to it anyway but the the, the fact is you're getting an eric's getting another intimidate onto the field but Having his Pokemon both in a healthy position yes. here. Uh, the Zashin on Eric's side, not in the best of positions. I mean, it's got mm -hmm. the Intrepid Sword boost, so it is stronger offensively, but you do have the, the, the active fake out on Eric's side of the field to take advantage of this turn. But like we're seeing here, Javier playing very cautiously, protecting that Zashin, not wanting to take any big risks and just pulling out a double protect to get around this fake out disruption from Eric's side of the field. Yeah, I really love this simple play by Javier, just burning out that fake out. And obviously Eric doesn't have the switch ability anymore either. He's down to 
Wanderers last two remaining Pokemon. So that will be the last fake out of this game too. Um, and again, the grassy terrain really helping to rejuvenate these Pokemon. I, I kind of forgot how healthy Javier's Pokemon are in this situation. And even if they can't deal a huge amount of damage, it very well might be enough to pick up the KOs here. I'm sure that Incineroar is going to go down very, very easily. And Zashim, you know, if it gets hit by something like the Behemoth Blade with the high horsepower as well, that could be enough. I think the Zashim might have to be a double up. Yeah, and I think that the big thing for Javier is are these Intimidators going to stop you knocking out the Zashin on Eric's side of the field? And the Grassy Terrain kind of providing that little bit of um, recovery every turn as well, which is making it a little bit more difficult. We do see the double up here just to get rid of the Incineroar. So that's at least one Pokemon on Eric's side of the field gone, making it a little bit easier. But it does leave the Zashin here with that plus one Behemoth Blade coming out onto Javier's side. So see how much this can do to the opposing Zashin. Oh, it does. Oh, oh one hit KO with a critical, critical hit. hit. That is oh. not what Javier needed. Oh, gosh. You could see the reaction from the player as well. Absolute devastation um, from that Zashin. And oh, I mean, all eyes are now on that Rillaboom. Yeah, and the, that, that's oh. such an unfortunate critical hit there because we've seen from the, the game one that, you know, the, the plus one behemoth play. It does mm. take it. So the critical hit there just turning this match completely on its head. Really unfortunate for Javier, and we do see the forfeit because the real boom intimidated, not going to be able to deal with the, um, the Zashi in there, and Eric taking the win.